Welcome back to my Texas yard, everybody. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you what I'm using for tomato trellises. And this year, it's, it's more important than ever because it's been so windy. Now, I've tried all types of trellises from store-bought ones to homemade ones. Um, and really, this year, I think I've, I've hit the nail on the head with the best tomato trellis as far as durability for the wind, uh, support, ease of use, you can reuse it, it's cheap. Um, so far, this is the, the best all-around tomato trellis that I've used. Now, I'll be doing a voiceover for this entire video because it's just too windy to get good audio. Now, I've used all types of store-bought tomato cages and staking systems. This is one I tried last year. It uses a traditional tomato stake pole with these uh, plastic clamps on it. Now, if you're lucky, you'll get one full season out of these before the sunshine just degrades them, and they'll lose all integrity, and they're just a giant waste of money, to put it frank. <laughs> uh, so don't even waste your time with this kind of crap. It does not work. The single stem method on these traditional tomato stake poles, I find these to be inadequate. They're too small. The tomatoes often outgrow these things, and if you don't stay on top of the pruning, your plant will just get too heavy, and you can bend these over in the wind really easily with a decent sized tomato plant. So don't even waste your time with that stuff. Now, another thing that I found does not work well for tomatoes are these traditional store-bought tomato cages. They're made of wire that's too small in diameter. They're not very strong. Uh, the wind will still rock your tomatoes back and forth. They outgrow these things. It's just not a good tomato system. They work great for peppers, which is why I use them on all my pepper plants. And they do use, uh, they, they do make a bigger wire more beefier version of it, but it's still not large enough uh, for tomatoes. The tomatoes outgrow it and it doesn't support the limbs of the tomato plant. So they work really well for peppers, but not for tomatoes. This system that I'm using here uh, is built off of one inch by half inch boards that are really cheap. You can get you know six footers for a, a, a few bucks at the Home Depot. It uses traditional T-stakes and then one inch screws. And it's really modular, it's really strong, and so far I haven't had a single complaint when using it. Now let me bring you up close and show you how I construct these. You're going to want to use your one inch screw and you're going to go from the front to the back. And I call the back the side that has that convex side on it. And the reason you want to do this is if you come from the front like this, your one inch screw will not protrude out through your board. If you go the other way, your screw will be too long and you'll have some sticking out and you'll cut yourself. So just make sure you put your screw uh, from the peak or the front of the T-post in towards the back like that. Use that convex side as a little spacer and you'll be just fine. Now I'm sure there's all types of boards in this uh, dimension, but what you wanna make sure to avoid is, is the boards with the sharp corners on them. This is a, a really nice finished board here and it has really sharp angles, really sharp corners on it, very square. Now this board here, is much more round. I'm, I'm not sure the technical terms for these, but make sure you get the ones that are more rounded and that way it doesn't cut your tomato plants in half when the wind blows. Now, yes, I do try to use untreated lumber whenever possible. Um, most of my tomato cages are untreated and they've lasted several years, uh, but this is stuff I had laying around and I didn't really wanna go buy more boards just to add on a little bit of extension to my tomato cage setup. Now here I already have some tomato cages set up and I'm adding some extensions on. I'm using my 10 pound weight to drive these T-sticks in the ground. Uh, this 10 pound dumbbell is, is much more efficient, easier to use as a hammer when driving these sticks in the ground. So I recommend you get a garden weight. <laughs> now, one of the cool things about using this system is that you can literally make it as big or as little or any shape that you want. Um, here I am trying to decide how long I want this board to stick out, how big I want this tomato plant to get and then I simply put a screw in it whenever I'm happy with uh, with the length of the board. Now that I've got my board installed I'm just going to take my saw and cut off the piece that I don't want and get ready to add the next uh, rung of the tomato trellis. Now sometimes building trellises can be difficult if you're by yourself but if you put your screw in the t-post first then get it started with your screw like this and then bring your board from the back side while you have the screw under pressure. Uh, it, it makes it a little easier. You don't need a third hand to hold your screw and your board at the same time. Now I'm just gonna place my second screw in and get the board completely secured. Now 
Now I'm just going to take my saw and cut off the piece that I don't want. And you could use a handsaw for this. It's really easy to cut these little boards with a handsaw, but I have got a power saw, so I'm just going to use it. Now this tomato is growing out the side, so I'm going to probably eventually have this thing boxed in with a four walled box uh, design. So what I'm doing here is pre-drilling some holes. If you're screwing into the end of the board, you might want to pre-drill it so that you don't split the wood. Uh, but I'm just going to put a support here on the end to help this healthy looking limb uh, grow. I, I don't like to trim off and prune healthy limbs. Like uh, I, I would rather have a bigger tomato plant than a pretty one. Um, so I'm going to add some more support to this guy and go with the flow and see how he turns out. Now I really don't prune my tomatoes that much, and, but when I do prune them, it's usually because they get so thick and bushy in the inside that it's hard to see the fruit, it's hard to pick the fruit. So what I'm doing here is gonna go out, uh, I'm gonna go in the middle and just thin it out so that I can access the fruit easier. And <laughs> I've had many tomato plants get so big and bushy that I, I had delicious tomatoes in there that I didn't even know existed. And then the birds and bugs got them when they over ripened. So, I'm going to go in, thin it out so I can see if I've got fruit, uh, and then just continue to let the plant grow out as it wants to. Now here's how easy it is to make some changes. I need to give this tomato plant a little bit more support lower. So I'm going to take this top rung and unscrew it and then screw it back in a little bit lower so that it can come in contact with this tomato plant. Now here's a, here's that trick, a little tip again. I'm going to take my screw, I'm going to put it in the t-post first get my drill started in the head of the screw and then bring the wood up to it that way you don't need uh, three hands you will be dropping your screws on the ground it's just a little bit easier to get the job done with that technique so that's pretty much it that's my new latest tomato trellis system that has proven to work pretty well so far in the extreme windy conditions of uh, spring 2022 here in uh, central texas it has been brutal and if you're new to gardening, I will give you this one piece of advice is do not underestimate the damage that the wind will cause to your plants. It will blow them right to the ground if you don't have a sturdy support system.